Hey everyone, in this four part tutorial series we're going to take a look at the process of creating an anime character similar to the Kiko content pack. In this part one we're going to focus on setting up the pipeline with your photo editing software and the basic rigging and sprite assembly for your character's body and head. Part two will focus on additional touches you can improve your character with such as accessories and springbone hair for use with puppet stage. Part 3 and 4 will focus on character expressions and creating a 360 degree head for your 2D character. To start off you'll need to be sure that you have your character sprite separated into the different layers according to the dummy template character which you can find by clicking on the create character button, then human template PSD. This will automatically load it into Photoshop and you'll see a number of layer groups which represent the various body part sprites and joint positions in Cartoon Animator. The red markers on the dummy represent joint positions where your various body and head sprites will pivot from. To make the process quicker, enable Layer Auto Select if you're using Photoshop. Under the RL Image V2 main layer group, you'll find all of the subgroups where you want to replace each body part image from the dummy. So we don't need to go back and forth between projects, I'll just start by copying the entire group hierarchy from Kiko's project and pasting it into the dummy project. Generally, you want your character to be a similar size to the template dummy and align their hips as much as possible. You can ungroup your source images for quicker access and then begin to click and drag them in the layer manager to their proper groups in the dummy group hierarchy. They should be added above the dummy images in their respective folders so you'll see the new character come together piece by piece. Now in this case we've prepared a number of extra images that will be used for accessories which I'll just aggregate in a temporary group so we can focus on the individual body sprites for now. When I replace the face sprite, I can proceed to delete the original one since we won't need it anymore. Once the body part sprite images are all added into the correct dummy template groups, we can delete the originals and move on to the joint marker placement. These markers determine the pivot point for each body part's rotation and can be found in the RL Bone Human V2 group. They're all named accordingly and if your new character is sized and positioned relatively close to the dummy template there won't be too much adjustment needed. The hip marker should be placed slightly below the belt line in the middle of your character's hips, while the torso marker should be right at the bottom of the upper body area. Neck goes at the base of the neck while the head marker should be placed at the top of the neck where you want the pivot point of your character's head to be. The head nub marker should also be placed around the base of the frontal hairline area. Again, not every character will have identical proportions and features, so this is just a base reference. The arms are fairly basic, with each marker being placed at the center top area of each arm section where you want the pivot point for its rotation to be. So mid shoulder for upper arm, mid elbow for lower arm, and mid wrist for hand. The hand nub just goes at the tip of the fingers. The legs are similar. Thigh markers should be placed at pivot points for upper legs and at the knees for lower legs. The feet are a bit more complex. The main foot marker should always be placed at the mid-bottom of the lower leg sprite, and generally foot 2 should be placed at the heel, while toe is placed at the ball of the foot. Toe nub just goes at the end of the toes. However, you can feel free to adjust these placements based on your desired effect. You can see I'm not following these rules very closely here. Lastly, be sure that the layer order is correct for your particular character. In this case, part of the jacket is on the hip image, so in order to prevent the upper thighs from protruding over the jacket, we need to drag our hip bone higher on the hierarchy. Again, this will vary from character to character. 
We're now officially done the body. Go ahead and save, and in Cartoon Animator, use the Motion Key Editor to check the rotation results of your marker placement. We're good to go, so let's move on to the facial features, which have layer groups of their own, separate from the body. As I mentioned, we're going to cover hair and accessories in part 2 of this tutorial, so I'll start by hiding all of the extras for now and just focus on the basic facial feature sprites. The facial feature sprites all need to be placed in the separate RL image head group according to the existing structure. In this case, I've already named the facial feature groups properly, so I'll just drag those groups into the dummy template group hierarchy. Facial feature groups like the eyes and mouth have more complex structures in order to create expressions, but for now, we just want to focus on proper naming and marker placement, so this is the simplest structure. You want to make sure the yellow cross markers are placed according to the location of your character's features. In this case, the ears are way up high, so we need to move those up. Generally, each marker should be placed in the middle of each sprite feature, with the face marker around the base of the skull where it connects to the neck. Save once again, and this time you can use the face key editor to test out the movement of each sprite image. That's it for this part 1 of this tutorial series. For the next video, we'll go through how to add accessories with extended bones and springy hair for natural movement. See you in the next video.